Hi, I'm Flavio, and we're going to be reviewing binary for the AP Computer Science Principles exam. So here's a good problem for learning how to do some binary math. So in this problem, we have an office with users who have IDs, and the IDs are represented using a binary sequence, and they have 100 staff members, and they want to know what is the minimum number of bits needed to assign unique bit to each staff member. So this is just a fancy way of asking, how many bits do we need to represent the number 100, which is a decimal number? When you see a question like this, the best way to do it is just to try to convert this number into binary. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to convert it to binary and count how many bits we need in order to represent it. So we're going to convert 100 to binary. And whenever you're converting a decimal number to binary or a binary number to decimal, the best way to start is by drawing out all the powers of 2. I like to draw them from the right to the left because that's how it's going to be represented in binary. So I start with 1, and then I'm going to put in 2, and then I'm going to put in 4. So these are the powers of 2. It's just 2 times the previous value. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. And I'm going to go all the way up to 64. And just for good measure, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do 128. And what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the biggest number from 100 that we can that still gives us a positive number, starting from the left. So 128 is too big. If I subtract 100 minus 128, I will get a negative number. So I'll look at 64. 100 minus 64 gives me a positive number. So what I do is I put a 1 over here, and I subtract. 100 minus 64 is 36. And I keep going. 36 minus 32 is 4. So I put a 1 over here, and I subtract. And now 4 minus 16 will give me a negative number, so I'll put a 0 here. 4 minus 8 also gives me a negative number, so I put a 0 here. 4 minus 4 gives me 0, so I put in a 1 over here. And that leaves me with 0. 4 minus 4 is 0. And now I have 0 minus 2 is a negative number, so I put 0. And 0 minus 1 is a negative number, so I put 0 here. So what that leaves me with is the binary representation for 100 is 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. And if we count the number of bits, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which is answer C. All right, so in this problem here, we have a binary number, which is this one right here, 1, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 1, 1. And what they're telling you here is that this number represents an ID and that the ID is going to go up by 1. So what we have is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And we're just going to add 1 to this number. Now, what you have to remember when you add 1 to a binary number, it's very much like if you were using decimal and you have the number 99 and you add 1 to 99, what you're going to do is you're going to, as soon as you go over the top number, which is 9, you're going to carry the 1 over to the other side, just like we did in elementary school. So here, this would be 1 plus 9, which is 0. Carry the 1, 0 plus 9. And don't forget we have this 1 over here, right? So just like we did in elementary school math with 99 plus 1, we're going to do a similar thing here. So here, to add 1 to all of this, this is the equivalent of this binary number, by the way. We're going to just add all of these numbers. So let's go 1 plus 1. 1 plus 1 in binary is 1, 0, right? So it's a 0 here. It goes over the maximum, which is 1. We carry the 1. Here we have a 1 plus 1 again, right? So it's also 0. And we carry the 1 here. Now we have 1 plus 0 plus 0, just 1. And all the rest, we just 0 plus 0, 0 plus 1, 0 plus 0, 0 plus 0, 1 plus 0. And we're left with 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, which is this option right here. So here we have a problem that's going to help us practice converting numbers from binary to decimal. Previously, we were converting numbers from decimal to binary. So here, we're going to go the other way around. I'm going to start by doing this kind of the traditional way. As before, I was going to start with 1, and then 2, and then 4. We're going to do all the powers of 2 up to a certain point. All right, so now we have our little grid, and we're going to try to convert this number over here. And what we're going to do is, if we have a 1, we're going to add that number, and if we have a 0, we're not going to add it. So we're going to add 1, and we're going to add 2, which is 3. All right, so let's clear this all out. All right, now for this one, we're going to do a little shortcut, right? So we're going to basically just start from here. Basically, just remember 1, 2, and 4. We're not even going to draw out the whole grid. We're just going to say that we're going to add, we're not going to add 1, we're just going to add 2 and 4, because that's we have a 1 here and a 1 here. So we're going to do 4 plus 2 equals 
equals 6. All right, so we have 3 and 6 already. So let's figure out what this last one is. All right, now the reason I want to do this problem is because I actually want to show you a little shortcut. I want to show a little trick. One thing that's kind of fun about powers of 2 and binary is that the powers of 2 themselves, like 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, etc., are represented in binary by basically a 1 and everything else being a, two, a 0. So let's do 0, 0, 0, 1. 2 is 0, 0, 1, 0 and so on. Now what you can see here is that in all of these cases power of 2 is a single one with all of the rest being zeros. Now here's actually a really neat little trick. If you want to represent the number that is just one less than the power of 2, for example the number 7, it's actually the next number, so 8, except that value is 0 and all the values before it are just 1's. The reason for that is because just like before, if we were to add 1 to this all of these would turn to zeros and this would become a 1. Same thing with 16. If we want to get the value for 15, all we have to do is turn this 1 into a 0 and turn all the previous zeros into 1s. Now you can see that this right here is 1, 1, 1, 1. That's this value right over here, which means that this is clearly 15. Let's just do this for some of these other ones too. 3, we can see, is 0, 0. So we turn this one into a 0 and we turn every number before it into 1, 1. And here for 2, that's just 0, 0. Number 1 is 0, 0, 0, 1. So this is actually a really neat little trick to really quickly figure out what the binary representation is of the number right before the power of 2. Now, what is the answer to this problem? Well, we already found that we have number 3, we have the number 6, and we have the number 15. So the answer here is the only one that's not represented is number 9. Thanks for watching, I'm Flavio and I'll be back with more soon.